hey, long term game. I know it's really scary, but like we're in this for the long haul. Or like, you know, the person's like, Shh, I have $2,000. Should I invest now or should I wait until I'm like, nope, time in the market is better than timing the market. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, stocks or bonds right now? Depends on how old you are, depends on your risk level. I am in VTI for the rest of my life. <laughs> I joke that like an index fund, right? Diversification, low fee, low risk. Not sexy, but that's where I'm hanging out. Because mm -hmm. you can keep your money there for a long time. Yeah, and groups of stocks, right? It's not just like I'm picking one company. It's like picking a racehorse, right? I'm not just picking that one company. I'm picking VTI is every single company on the US stock market. What's the difference between that and an ETF? It's basically the difference in when they're traded. Mutual funds are traded differently than ETFs. OK. A, a lot of people I know, and I'm not one of them, who has a ton of money stockpiled, mm. uh, it has shifted it recently from stocks to bonds, for example. Yeah. Um, Can I ask how old you are? I'm a middle-aged man. OK. <laughs> but that's the natural thing, right? Yeah. It's like you talk to any financial expert. I'm 28. I'm OK being 100% in bonds, or excuse me, 100% in stocks. And as you age, right, you're moving more of your portfolio out of stocks and into bonds. Yeah. Well, I, I talked to one of these um, investor gurus. Mm -hmm. um, and he, How much did they want to charge you? Well, no, 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 no. I, I'm talking like he's an entrepreneur. He's 32. Okay. okay. And he has like, I don't know, $40 million in the bank. Cool. And he's like, I'm taking all my money. I'm going liquid and I'm putting it in bonds. Huh. And I'm like, That's, that was my reaction. Huh. huh. What do you know that I don't know? And so I was just curious like what your hot take on that is, but. My hot take is that there are no hot takes with investing. Mm -hmm. Again, I talked about like investing shouldn't be sexy. It should be stable and consistent over a long period of time. Yeah. And everybody out here, um, you know, day trading, crypto, like, nah, it, it's consistent. And if you're thinking day to day or even like year to year, that needs to be in a savings account. That, that's not where your investments go. Right. Your investments are retirement and I would argue any goal that is like seven to ten years out like if you want to buy a house in a couple of years I wouldn't put that in the market but you have to understand like your risk awareness like what are you willing to gain or lose and I think the other thing too is um even when we're talking about like gain and losing um you haven't lost or gained money unless you sell so all these people right. panicking right and reading the CNBC market headlines which is like Nasdaq down 20 percent and it's like uh, great okay like that sucks but like i'm in this for a really long time and it's just like buying a house where like the actual value hasn't hasn't come unless you choose to sell right are you looking to jump on opportunities like you know amazon is down for example or nope. disney is down or i own two individual stocks and i did it out of like moral support i own bumble and i own shopify okay bumble because i believe in the mission and shopify has asked me to speak and i think they're a great company they're the only two individual stocks i own okay. i own very small shares of them okay otherwise it's just that Group. 65% of my portfolio is VTI. Another, I think, like 10 to 15%. This is I'm literally like looking at treasury in my in my head yeah. as we break it down. That's the other cool part about you can see everybody's investments. You can't see the amount of money, but you can see like what is their breakdown. 99.9% .9 of my money is in index funds. Maybe let's um, like final parting words for founders, entrepreneurs, and small mm. business peeps. One thing that I've learned, especially as a younger entrepreneur, is that there were plenty of times where I was looking at somebody with a certain business and going, I can do that. I'm capable of that. Why is it not happening? Like I joke now, do you know Jenna Kutcher? Uh, no. Oh, she'd be a great person to have on. So she, um, she and I are now like colleagues and friends. Okay. But back when I started in 2015, 2016, she was like the beacon where I was like, oh, I want that. Like, you know, great podcast and big social following and, and a stellar marketer. And I was like, I'm capable of that. Why can't I have that? But if a genie gave me Jenna Kutcher's business as it was and as I was in 2015, 2016, I would not have been able to handle it. And my ambition has gotten me where I am. My ambition is also a drug where I frequently overdose. <laughs> and it's frequently the reason that I can cite that I am not satisfied ever. And that we were talking before about, you know, what is the Tory done that brand? And it's the human being versus human doing of like, I never feel like I'm doing enough. And I think you have to be patient with your ambition. You have to curb that ambition to understand if you know you're capable of that, you will get it. If you know you're capable of that, you will get it. It just might take a while. 
but it's supposed to take a while. Because again, the business I'm running now, I could not have handled in 2015. I didn't have the skill set. I didn't have the, the confidence. I didn't have the money or the resources. I learned all of that by doing it. So if you are the person who is just so ambitious and is dreaming so big, don't stop. You also need to understand that things are going to take as much time as they're going to take. And you actually need all of that time and that skill set and that expertise to be able to handle all of the dreams that are going to come true. Mm-hmm.